So for our next example of linear programming, we will look at a problem involving graphs and networks to do with network bandwidth. So suppose we have a small communication network involving three users. So the users are capital A, capital B and capital C. And each of them is connected through some switches which we call A, B and C. And so we have a network which, this is an internet network, which connects these three users and our requirement is to ensure that each pair of users A to B, B to C and A to C gets at least 2 megabits per second of connectivity from between that pair of users. Right? So we want at least 2 Mbps connectivity along these three routes. Now notice that from A to B there are two ways I can send packets. Right? I can send them directly via A and B or I can send them indirectly by a small c. Right? So it turns out that it doesn't really matter from the point of view of the users whether this 2 Mbps bandwidth comes from the shorter a red route or the longer green route. Okay? So our com aim is to combine the capacity of the red and the green for each pair. Okay? So similarly there will be, for example, there will be a direct route from b to c and there will be an indirect route that goes like this. Okay? So for each pair there is a direct route and an indirect route. So long as a combination of the capacities of the direct and the indirect routes adds up to at least 2 Mbps, our customers are satisfied. So now the constraint that we have is that these links have a capacity. So if I look at, for example, the link between B and C, it can only transmit 13 megabits per second total across all the different connections that it is a part of. Now on the other side, we earn some money from these customers, which is not uniform. So for the AB link, we get 300 rupees per megabit Mbps per month. Okay. For B to C, we get only 200. But for A to C, we get 400. So now we have to allocate a minimum of 2 megabits, but the customers are willing to take as much as we can give them, subject to that minimum. And we get a certain amount of revenue depending on how we utilize the capacity. So our goal is to allocate manual to maximize the revenue given that the customers are willing to take anything above 2 Mbps. So as we have been seeing, we, our aim is to set this up as a linear program. So in this case, what are the variables that we are going to use? So recall that we said that every connection has two routes. right? So we have A to B coming via the short route and we have A to B coming via the long route. So what we will use is the variable x from A to B to denote the quantity that is flowing on the red route and similarly y from A to B to denote the quantity it is flowing on the green route. Right? So we have two variables associated with the A to B service that we are going to provide, how much goes directly XAB, how much goes indirectly YAB. Similarly, between B and C we will have XBC which goes through the short route and YBC which goes via the long route and same way for XAC and YAC. Right? So we have these six variables describing the different ways of connecting pairs of customers. Now these variables are constrained by the capacities of our links. Okay. So supposing we look at this particular link, the link from small b to capital B. Now it has a capacity of 10. Now what routes does it lie on? So it certainly lies on the short route A to B. So it lies on the XAB route. So if any quantity which is assigned to XAB will, will eat into this 10. Similarly, it lies on the YAB route. Right? So that also has to ultimately reach capital B through small b. So this will also eat into that. It also lies on the B to C route. Right? So XBC. And finally it lies on the B to C route going the other way. This is YBC. So all these four routes put together will add up to whatever capacity is flowing through this link. Right? And this link has capacity 10. So XAB plus YAB plus XBC plus YBC has to be at most 10. So likewise if I look at for instance this link in the same way I have all these different things which are coming here. Right? So I have four quantities. I have the direct link from A to B, the indirect link from A to B, the direct link from A to C, the indirect from A to C and they all must add up to at most 12. And the third same holds for this. Okay? So these three constraints that we have seen here. Okay? account for 
the, the capacities of the tail end link. So we have accounted for this capacity, this capacity and this capacity. Okay, so these three capacities are connected to our flows by these three equations. So this still leaves us to account for these three constraints. So now if you look at this link, okay, then this is served, this is part of three connections. It is the A to B direct connection. Okay. It is on the B to C indirect connection. And finally, it is on the A to C indirect connection. Okay. So that says it's a direct connection A to B plus the indirect connection B to C plus the indirect connection A to C all together cannot be more than six. Okay. In the same way, we have a similar equation for this link. Okay. So it lies on the indirect connection from A to B. It lies on the indirect connection from, sorry, it lies with, uh, yeah, it lies on the indirect connection from A to B, it lies on the direct connection from B to C, and it lies on the indirect connection from A to C. Okay. So these three things cannot exceed 30. And the third same thing holds for 11. Right. So for 11, we have that it lies on the direct connection from uh, A to C and on these two indirect connections, right? A to B indirect connection and B to C indirect connection. So in this way, now we have covered the six constraints. So we had three constraints corresponding to the tail end links and we had three constraints corresponding to the links in the triangle. So we have six total constraints. Okay. Finally, we have this minimum requirement that between A and B, we must apply at least two. Between B and C, we must apply at least two. And between A and C, we must apply at least two. And these are the sums of the indirect and direct. We don't distinguish between them. And of course, every capacity must be non-negative. Right? So this gives us all our constraints. And what is our objective function? The objective function is the revenue that we realize. Okay? So the A to B connection is XAB plus YAB. This is the total volume. That gives us 300. Similarly, XBC plus YBC gives us 200 and XAC plus YAC gives us 400. So if we multiply 300 into XAB plus YAB, 200 into XBC plus YBC and 400 into XAC plus YAC and add it up, this is our total revenue and we want to maximize this revenue. So for these particular numbers, these are the answers that we get, okay, that we have nothing flowing directly from A to B. We have seven going from A to B directly and so on. So if you look, for example, at, at this link, so this link lies on the direct route from A to B, so that is 0. It lies on the indirect route from A to B, that is 7. It lies on the direct route from B to C, that is 1.5. Okay. And it lies on the indirect route from B to C, that's another 1.5. And if you see that, this is 10. Okay. So therefore, this link has a total capacity of 10 and all 10 units are being utilized given the combination that it gets. Right? So in this way you can try for each link and find out that everything except this link of 11 is actually saturated by this flow. It also turns out here that you can see that some of the quantities that we get are fractional. But since we are dealing with internet bandwidth, there is no reason it is not like you know hiring or firing a person or, a, or making half a carpet. Okay, we can easily split our bandwidth in some fractional quantities, so that's not a that's not a problem. Here. There is, however, another problem, okay, which is the way we have actually set up the linear program. So the way we have set up the linear program is to take each possible way of routing the traffic. So we have A to B, we have a link. We have A to B like this, we have another path, and for each path we have a variable. We have X A B, Y A B, and so on. Right? So every path is represented by the quantity flowing through that path. So the problem with this is that the number of paths flowing through a graph is going to be exponential. So this is not a good modeling strategy. So what we are doing is we are taking this network bandwidth allocation model and we are implementing it or we are describing it using linear programming. But if we set up a program, linear program, which has a large number of variables, then the problem is in some sense blowing up in complexity in the translation. So we don't want this, we want efficient translations. Okay, and this is not one. It so happens that for a small problem like this with only three uh, customers, it works fine. But as it grows larger and larger, this translation will not scale up. 
But we will look at another way of looking at these network flows as they are called and see that in general network flows can be easily represented in terms of linear programs. But it's important to note that in general when we do a translation into a linear program we would like the number of variables we get to be small, say polynomial in the input problem. So in the input problem if we have a certain size the linear program should not blow up. 